Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see ASME Section 8, Division 1, UG28, Thickness of Shells, Under External Pressure Theory. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. In this class, we'll focus on the external pressure design for a cylindrical shell. Okay, that is our topic. So the structure of UG28, if you see, there are two different criteria which are given okay, for design of external pressure. So first one is whether my D0 by T ratio is less than 10 or it's greater or equal to 10. Okay. So these are the two requirements which uh, we need to take care. So first, before starting the design of external pressure, we have to decide we are in which ratio, like what is my D0 by T ratio so that I can decide whether I will follow 28C1 which is for D0 by T greater or equal to 10 and whether I need to follow C2 which is for less than 10, thicker and thinner and thicker shells. Okay, that is what it is. So, let us focus first one. If my D0 by T ratio is greater or equal to 10, now your, your question will be that I am going to calculate the thickness of shell right so if i don't know t how i'll be able to know that my d naught by t ratio is greater or less right so for that you have to choose one and then proceed because external pressure thickness calculation is based on assumption of thickness we'll see what thickness assumption you should take to start with because if you select a uh, you can select any thicknesses, okay? But then you may end up doing lots of iteration, okay? So if you want to avoid that, you have to select the T properly. We are going to see that what thickness assumption we should do. Please always remember that this part we are doing once we have completed that internal pressure thickness calculation, okay? So after that we are doing. So we know what is the thickness for internal pressure, okay? And we have to qualify both, internal and external both. Right. So, what thickness I should start with that we are going to discuss in this chapter. But before that, let us understand what exactly is the external pressure. Many times we, we don't visualize how that failure due to external pressure happens. Okay. Internal pressure we know, you know, like if there is too much stresses, there will be tensile stresses and then finally it will reach to yield and failure. So failure will happen because of yielding of material. Okay. But in external pressure calculation, the failure does not happen because of yielding. It happens because of buckling. Okay. The vessel suddenly collapses. Just to visualize that, let us uh, consider an empty bottle of water. Okay. Uh, Completely empty that bottle and then try to suck that bottle you know, from the top. You will see that your bottle, you know, if you try to suck it with the very high pressure, will try to create a vacuum kind of scenario, right? What you are going to do? You are trying to do, trying to suck out all the atmosphere which is there inside that bottle. So we try to create a vacuum kind of scenario. We will not be able to achieve full vacuum, but even partial vacuum is also sufficient to crush that bottle. Okay, so you can see that in picture. So try to imagine what is happening with that, right? Try to see the failure of that bottle. Okay. Now if you same bottle, if you're trying, trying to fail because of internal pressure, we will not be able to apply such much so much pressure, you know, because very high pressure will be required to yield it. But very, at very low vacuum pressure, the crushing will happen, the buckling will happen. Okay. So that is the difference between internal and external pressure failure. So phenomena are completely different and so the methodology also. Okay. So let us see we selected D0 by T 
by assuming some thickness what thickness we should assume we'll see when we take some example now that time we'll understand it in a better way so let us uh, consider you assumed one thickness based on that you calculated d naught by t if you got greater than 10 then we can select 28c1 okay so the step one is to assume a thickness step two calculate the outside diameter why because we have to calculate d naught by t ratio third is length of the vessel now this length of the vessel is little bit different you know it's not the tan to tan length of the vessel it's the length of the vessel between line of support okay now what is line of support and what length we are going we are talking about we are going to see it okay so we have to calculate first of all see we are going to do all the calculations so don't worry well we are going to understand each and every term but first let us study the procedure of it okay how code says to calculate so first we'll calculate d naught by t ratio then we calculate l by d ratio okay how to calculate l we we'll see we'll see that okay with d naught by t ratio and l by d ratio we'll go to section 2 part d okay where we will go we'll go to section 2 part d in part d there are three sub parts right if you remember sub part 1 sub part 2 sub part 3 okay so which sub part will go tell me in the chat box whether we'll go to sub part 1 whether we'll go to sub part 2 or sub part 3 munend absolutely right sub part 3 okay so in sub part 3 we'll find this pega g which we call as geometrical chart why we call it geometrical chart because it's completely based on the dimensions l by d ratio d naught by t ratio so all dimensions you know so based on the geometry of that cylinder we will be able to calculate this factor a we don't need the material we don't need pressure or anything okay so once we get that factor a now we'll go to material chart okay so in material chart we have lots of temperature line based on the modulus of elasticity value and there will be relation with factor a and factor b depending upon the temperature line we will see that how we are going to calculate so based on factor a we will get the factor b value okay just note down the sequence we will see that again okay so once we have the factor b with factor b this formula given by code by using that we can calculate the maximum allowable pressure for that cylinder okay so that is the overall procedure